Today, we brought in a group of conservative young women and wanted to get their honest opinions about what they're looking for in the guys they date. What are you looking for in a partner? They just have to be a conservative. Definitely someone that wants to have kids. I like an independent man. Personally, I like the alpha male vibe. I want a man who really loves his family. Definitely someone whose faith is important to them. For me, it's someone who actually wants to meet my parents. Why do you want to date a conservative? For me, at least I know that we're going to start off with some shared values. Well, the conservative men I've dated at least know how to treat me like a woman. In my personal experience, conservative guys have better manners. I like that they understand their role in the relationship as a man. I just prefer my men to be masculine. And what's the biggest red flag when it comes to dating? A Democrat. No Democrats. A Democrat. Can't be a Democrat. A Democrat. That's easy. A Democrat. No Democrats. So no. <laughs> Find the right match. Download the right stuff today. Oh my god, hoes will be hoes. Oh. Um, get out. Let's do the next get one. Get out. We're both boys. Oh, oh no. no. Well, I liked it. I liked it too. Don't do it. Why? Why? Because it's not good for the environment. Let's do it anyways. Oh, oh no. no. Wait, I also kind of like Do this. you want to do it with us? Whoa. Maybe. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh. Oh. Stop, Stop homophobia. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? Hey, sorry to bother you. What's I'm up? Fernando. I work for Peak Energy. We're a few doors down. We're in 1845. Okay. So we do solar around here. We're just coming around talking to neighbors. Uh, sorry, dude. Neighbors. I apologize, man. I know. <laughs> no, man, that wasn't even... your single most controversial opinion this was made for me i actually am thinking about changing my name to the controversial homemaker because it just fits me better and it fits my account better so i was thinking like what is the most controversial thing about me like what do i feel is the most controversial and i obviously had a hard time with this because i think everything that i feel is completely reasonable but when thinking of american women I think the most controversial belief that I have is that we should all be submitting to our husbands. And this doesn't mean if he beats you that you stay. This doesn't mean if he's emotionally abusive towards you, you stay. I'm not saying that like, please, if you're in an abusive relationship, get out. Like, I just want to start off with that. Don't stay if he abuses you. But if you're married to a good man, like a good man who takes care of you and loves you, and I'm not saying a perfect man, because none of them are perfect, but a good one, then you submit to him. Say, yes, sir. I know some of y'all don't like that, but it's probably because you're not from the South, and some of you Southerners don't even like that, and that might be something y'all lost, um, but it's a big part of being a Southern. But anyway, I say yes, sir, to my husband. I do as he asks. If he um, has a question about something and asks my opinion, I give him my honest opinion, and even when he doesn't take my advice or do what I think he should have done, and the whole thing blows up in his face, which doesn't always happen, but sometimes it'll happen, I never say, I told you so. I never throw it in his face. I just help him get through it and support him. Our husbands don't need us nagging them. They don't need us controlling the home.
they need us submitting to them, supporting them, and loving them. And that's probably my most controversial opinion. I don't know. I could probably do 12 videos on this. Hey, have you seen the TV ads with the governor talking about the great things she's done for Michigan? She's a liar. Whitmer can say what she wants, but we live here. Just look around, man. During COVID, Whitmer locked down businesses like the Owasso Barber and put one woman from Holland in jail. Oh yeah, 3,000 restaurants closed. And she's pro-business? Yeah, right. And what about those higher gas and food prices? Our schools were closed for almost two years. Poor kids. Speaking of kids, Whitmer says she's gonna work like hell to keep killing babies. And she put COVID patients in Graham's nursing home. Graham died alone. <sighs> okay, okay, I'm voting for the other chick. What's her name? Tudor Dixon. Okay, let's roll. Watch out for potholes. Whitmer never kept her promise to fix the, the damn, damn roads. Introduce our group. We're called the Hopkins Family Entertainers. This is Sammy Hopkins, my brother. Over here is Jane Hopkins, my sister-in-law. And then last but not least, I'm Martha Hopkins, and I'm from Swetsonville. And I want y'all to know we appreciate everything you did. We appreciate you having us in. And at this time, we want Sammy to lead us in a word of prayer. A most kind, loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this Christmas season. We thank you for the fireman who has given so many years of service to people. A lot of people don't even say thank you. This is just a small way today to say thank you, Burlington Fire Department. Most of all, thank you, Jesus, for our friends at the Burlington Fire Department. We ask you, Father, always go with them with safety. You have an arm, new shield around each one. And always keep them safe and let them not be ready when that time comes that you can meet us in heaven. Amen. At, at this time, I'd like for the captain of this station, Kenny Dixon, to come and say a few words. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Welcome. It is so nice to have each one of you with us today. And welcome to Station 4 here in the Burlington Fire Department next to the Holly Hill Mall. We are very honored today to have these special guests with us. Martha, we've known her for years. Sammy, we've known them for years. And Jane, we've known her for years. And we want you to enjoy the program that they are sharing with us. So sit back in your seats, listen good, and we'll all enjoy this together. Thank you.
cake the house with powder polish. La 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. La 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 la. Dominica is a parrot. La 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 la. From the edge of Utah terror. Let me just start out. It was a lovely Thursday afternoon. A simple man just waiting for a dopamine surge on a lovely day. There was a Machine Gun Kelly concert that night, and I matched up with a hot 34-year-old blonde tasty girl. I mean, for God's sake, she looked like she was 24. I mean, did she get fucking gene editing done or something? Jesus Christ. Anyways... She told me she was going to the Machine Gun Kelly concert tonight, and I replied, No way! I'm going too! Knowing damn well I haven't even purchased the goddamn tickets yet. Let's just call her Kelly. I forgot her fucking name anyways. I drove up to the concert hoping this wasn't going to be World War fucking 3. We meet up at my car, and immediately she starts talking about her past. In my head, I'm already getting bored of her sob story. We ended up walking into the concert just in time for the pre-show to begin. Kelly, the groupie, apparently knew almost every guy there and was giving them their time of day. I thought to myself, this woman is 34. She has to have been around the block for sure. As I annoyance grew, so did my anger. But anyways, as a gentleman, I bought her a 20-ounce white claw despite my emotions. We ended up getting seated. All she did was bring up her past and did not want to talk about any kind of growth. What's going on in this present? She ended up telling me that she had a 14-year-old kid and I flipped a switch. I stood up and I walked out that concert before it even fucking began. Chapter 2. The Groupies As I was walking out of that concert, I didn't even care I was missing the Machine Gun Kelly concert. My dumb bitch ex already loved him, and I knew she was going to be there, so I didn't want any trouble. But when I was marching towards my car, I received a call, and this was just destiny. I met this girl a week prior on Bumble, and we hung out for maybe 30 minutes most. Let's just call her Emma. She calls me and asks, what are you doing tonight? I said, not shit, sweetie. She went straight for the fucking bullet and asked me the one question I've been waiting here my whole life. Would you be willing to have a threesome with one of my best friends tonight? She's a lot prettier than me, but I don't care because we grew up together. I, res I responded with the kind of answer any man would. I said, I'm totally down. Always looking for new experiences. This dirty bitch responded, you are so fucking cool. Chapter 3, The Apartment Cleanup After that phone call, I fucking sped my $1,300 apartment and deep cleaned that motherfucker. These girls are filthy, so I couldn't let my apartment damage them anymore. After the cleaning, I went to the store and bought a bottle of Termana Blanco Tequila. You know, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson shit. And some Coronas, you know, just to top it off. I knew these groupies loved alcohol. I didn't even have to ask. I called him up and asked, Would you two ladies want a nice steak and uh, corn dinner before things get started? She said, That would be lovely of you. The two groupies show up, Emma... And let's call this other woman, by the way, 10 out of 10 woman, Brittany. I ended up cooking up these 33 fucking ribeyes, and I fired that fucking frozen corn up. These two girls are very spiritual and taught me a lot about astrology. I mean, this bitch had me pull my own birth chart, for God's sakes. I don't know if they were fucking Libras or something like that. Aquarius, Sagittarius, I don't fucking give a shit. I was born on November 16th, so I'm considered a fucking Scorpio. Once I had dinner ready for them... I played most of the simplest guitar chords ever. I could tell they were already aching to get in my fucking bedroom. I said, ladies, I just met you. Let's get to know each other. Jeez. Man, women these days. Anyways, we ended up having a great time. And we actually role played, acted out random scenarios, you know, just like did some actor shit, you know. It was pretty damn fun. I'm not gonna lie. Two beautiful groupies loving every quality of me. Brittany was like, I need to take a shower. I said, let me lead the way. I did not give a fuck and ripped off every single part of my clothing. And I stepped into that hot shower. And I said, Brittany, you coming? While Brittany and I take a shower together and that dirty bitch Emma. That dirty bitch Emma sits on the toilet and observes like a fucking perv. 
Give me a break. Chapter 4, The Climax. After we all got cleaned up, I said, I think it's time we head to the fucking bedroom. These two hot groupies had no hesitation and laid down on my bed like fucking ragdolls. I previously screenshotted some threesome positions earlier that night and told them this is what we're going to do tonight. These groupies wanted to be dominated. They said, you control us tonight. My cock got harder than a thick chunk of goddamn gold. I told them I was going to give them 50-50 attention so nobody got jealous. Because, you know, I'm a fucking gentleman. Anyways, they both just go in all my junk. Sucking, licking, you name it. It was about 2 in the morning when we first started. So we were all cranked up on tequila and Red Bulls. I ended up making Brittany come three times and she was fucking obliterated. Lying on her stomach, almost defeated. Dead asleep. Emma was still up and going, and I still haven't busted yet. Fucking condoms, man. I flipped Emma over forcefully, and I gave it to her and Doggy with all my thrust and force. Ripping Emma's soul away from her uterus, I fucking busted all over her back. At this point, she's already came four times, she said. I said, I'm not done with you yet. I flip her over, and I start finger-banging her as fast as I could. Something magical happened that night. Emma started to projectile, ejaculate, squirt, etc., whatever you want to call it. I swear to God, she left a fucking urine puddle on my bed. Once we were all finished, it was 6 a.m. and the sun was coming up. The dopamine-filled adventure had finally came to an end. Chapter 5. The Truth. These women, man, these women had fucking kids. We're still living with their baby daddy and we're both dealing with CPS cases. Stop fucking a college bodybuilder and get your shit straight. In conclusion, I went to took I <laughs> I went and took an STD test that, a week later and thankfully I'm still cleaner than a goddamn whistle.